Okay, everybody, finally, I have got all five of my cells in series working amazingly with my high voltage impedance matching circuit. And this is a new circuit that I made, <laughs> which I'm going to back away from in a minute, but if you can just look at the production on that. Now, I've got a pretty decent amount of current as well as voltage um, because I want these cells to condition with the Lawton circuit style where you're using a decent amount of current to really build that oxide layer. Now I'm going to back up here and show you guys how this resonance is working, how I'm getting the high voltage. <laughs> so don't panic. Here it is. Uh, <laughs> it's quite involved but it's actually simpler than you might think now I've got a number of things here that I need to point out but I'll start with the first one I just turned this on today I had to configure that a little bit and I finally got good results you might think that I've got two supplies here and I'm doing 24 volts nope I've got 12 volts coming in. Um, the only reason I have another wire falling off there is because I'm powering another impedance matching circuit, which is coming out here, and I've got it hooked up to this little guy right here, which I've been running for a pretty considerable amount of time. Um, and yeah, it actually hasn't been running too long, probably only a few days, and I have managed to get it down to 750 milliwatts. It is actually taking 30 milliamps to run that on 24 volts. So back to the story on this crazy setup, which I've got with my beautiful cell there. I have a 12 volt input. It is a 12 volt. So right down in that corner with the white coming out, there's the red, there's the positive, goes into my terminal here. And I'll have a circuit wiring diagram for all of this junk because it's just really hard to kind of show what's happening. I've got a couple uh, automotive ignition coils. I've got two AC capacitors of a different microfarad each. And I've got two of the microwave oven transformers in a, in a configuration so that you can actually get more voltage out of it. In a configuration where you can actually double the voltage with two of the microwave transformers, as long as you've got the diode rectifying chaos going on here, and you finally got this yellow wire that just comes out, and then that is going to the cell. Quite crazy to see there. And this is Stanley Meyer style because it is at resonance all the time. And I'll kind of give a brief rundown of how that works. So there's, there's kind of two separate circuits. This is the impedance matching resonance circuit. So there's the BJT. I've got my bifiler coil here. It's, ac it's actually a quint filer and, um, and hex filer at the same time. I've got the smaller gauge here, which is like more like a trigger winding more or less. And then I've got five wires in parallel all of the wires are in parallel but what's important is that the power winding side has like five wires so you're getting a lot of surface area and that really just that really just increases efficiency but long story short what happens is it induces a resonance on a tank circuit which is actually separate and it's the Alexander Meisner circuit I hope I'm saying that right and when that resonance is induced on this end it can cause the spark gap to happen in these automotive ignition coils now again that's really hard to see without a circuit diagram so I'll have that in the description you can kind of check out so when those spark gaps are sparking it is inducing a short there's actually a short happening when that arc occurs for a brief momentary amount of time and what that does is it induces a high voltage on the secondary as well as primary because I have them configured in such a way where the secondary which is the ground of the mot comes out and it's right in a connection here where it's in tandem with one of the primary coils as well as the secondary and you can see 
see it coming in here. It's a little complicated, but there's the secondary winding. There's the other secondary winding that would normally complete your high voltage circuit. And I don't want to be, I don't want to touch this, but this wire, this yellow wire, and then you got the red one. They basically just all adjoin right here. And then you've got the one that's down here on the primary side, and it also adjoins. So what you have is this enormous, I would say, coupling of voltage, and that actually happens same exact configuration with the other microwave oven transformer. So what was 200 volts coming in with the AC resonance, that's that's right, it's AC resonance, not DC resonance, going to two microwave oven transformers, are probably looking somewhere at around 500 maybe 200 volts at minimum. But if you do the math on that, of course, with all of the losses in, in the iron, the cores of the transformers, as well as really just the radiant energy that this coil picks up, it's not as much as you would think in terms of actual voltage with it being a one to 18 ratio on the microwave oven transformers. But regardless, with resonance, this is what I can get. And I just have, and I just started this cell probably 20 minutes ago, so. I just decided to whip my camera out and show it real quick. Hopefully that kind of gives you guys some inspiration and hopefully you go and assemble this circuit for yourself and we can have multiple results across multiple people and hobbyists doing this sort of thing because I think it can be said once and many times again that this is just something that people need in their lives and that's sort of off topic but here it is. This is action speaking louder than words. <laughs> I'm gonna have to just kind of do a weak progression on the cell conditioning. Um, it is very high power. There's 29. I'll go ahead and I'll actually turn it off so you can see the difference here with the supplies at idle. So you can see it dropping down there to 12. So it takes a decent amount of power, but that's what I want. Keeping in mind that I have another circuit right here that's actually not doing too bad of a job. And I let you guys know that this was taking 750 milliwatts and I'll go ahead and prove that. So here's the supply. Now I'll go ahead and I'll flick it off now. 12.3, 11.6, 7.5, 12.3, 11 11.6. So if you do the math on that, and I will go ahead and show that it is off. No cuts to the video whatsoever. You can see the hydrogen is just kind of dying off there. Now I'll go ahead and I'll turn it back on. Eleven point six, twelve point three. Let's say twelve point four to be generous. So roughly eight hundred to seven hundred and fifty milliwatts on this cell right here. I think that's the most efficient hydrogen cell I've actually ever gotten. You can see it generating right there. 